Good afternoon, young people. Let's talk about one-step mole problems. Here's an example. How many moles are in 98.3 grams of aluminum hydroxide? Well, let's take the time and two different colors to identify our givens and our unknowns. How many? There's my question phrase. So I know that moles must be my unknown. 98.3 grams, there's the number, there's the unit, and then the chemical also. Don't forget the chemical. That's my given. I'm going to use the Guster method to list out my givens and my unknown. In this case, I have only one given. That is 98.3 grams Al parentheses, OH3, number, unit, chemical. Don't forget any piece of that. My unknown is moles. Moles of what? Well, there's my unit. Am I changing chemicals? No. Aluminum hydroxide is the chemical. So I've got my given and my unknown. Now, it's worth it for you to take the time to highlight. And it's worth it for you to take the time to write out your given and your unknown. I'm going to show you now how to talk to, or how to think about the strategies that you're going to need. Here's my trusty mole diagram. My given is grams, so I'm going to put my finger on mass. And I'm trying to get my unknown is moles, so I'm going to put my finger on moles. And in order to get from mass to moles, I have to cross one arrow. That means I have one strategy, one relationship that I need to use in order to do this problem. Now, in chemistry, relationships means mathematical equation. So the mathematical equation that I'm going to use here is one mole equals the molar mass in grams. For my relationship part of the guster, I'm going to use one mole ALOH3 equals, and I need the molar mass. i got to do a side calculation for aluminum hydroxide. Let's do that over here really quick. AL, how many atoms do I have? Just one times 27.0. How many oxygens do I have here? Three distributes in, so that's three atoms times 16.0. How many hydrogens do I have? The three distributes in, so that's three atoms times 1.0. Add it all up, and I get 78.0 grams for one mole. That means for my relationship, it's going to be equal to 78.0 grams. And again, I'm going to take the time to write out the number, the unit, and the chemical. That's the only relationship I need to go from mass to moles. So now I can go ahead and I can set up my fractions. My solution is going to look like this. I take my given 98.3 grams ALOH3 and you can put that over 1 if you want to turn that into a fraction, times another fraction. How many fractions do I need? I need one fraction for the given, and I need one fraction for each relationship that I have. This is one relationship, so I'm going to be done after I'm done with this one fraction. Before I try to figure out what goes on top and what goes on the bottom, I can take the grams and the chemical from that, from that numerator, and I can move it down to the denominator. I always take whatever the unit and the chemical is from the numerator, and I move it down to the denominator of the next fraction every single time. Now I know that 78.0 goes on the denominator because it's grams here, grams there. I fill that in first, and now I never get it wrong. And I know that one mole Al. OH3 goes on the top. 
Don't be lazy. Write the unit and the chemical in every single location on these fractions. When I go to do the math, grams cancels grams. Aluminum hydroxide cancels aluminum hydroxide. And the only thing I'm left with is moles and this one right there, that aluminum hydroxide right there. So when I plug this into my calculator, I should get 1.26 moles of ALOH3. And now I'm done. Thanks for watching.